Right. Well, let's environmental sustainability depends on two things really the environmental impact of raw material extraction and the environmental impact of the energy consumption for the material extraction and product production and therefore we've got to consider raw material availability raw material constituent extraction production of raw polymer conversion of polymer into finished product product life cycle reclamation of polymer at the end of designated product use, conversion of polymer to alternative product uses and alternative use life cycles. A bit of a list, but each one is important as I hope to demonstrate now. Right, raw material availability. Are we gonna run out of polyolefins? International Energy Authority asserts that despite government efforts to cut pollution and carbon emissions from oil and gas, that it is expected the rapid growth of emerging economies such as India and China to propel demand for petrochemical products. Oil demand for transport is expected to slow by 2050 due to the rise of electric vehicles and more efficient combustion engines, but that would be offset by rising demand for petrochemicals. Petrochemicals are expected to account for more than a third of global oil demand growth by 2030, and nearly half of the demand growth by 2050. Raw material constituent extraction. How do you get the components for the raw material? This is linked to the sustainability of hydrocarbon extractions, such as fracking, and will be influenced by environmentally focused international programs to reduce global warming. Alternative raw materials may be forthcoming, but, after eight, but it's 80 years since the first discovery, discovery of polyolefins and no inexpensive alternatives have been produced. Published data suggests that 3.1 kilowatts of energy are consumed in the extraction process and a further 7.8 kilowatt hours in the extraction of the monomers for feedstock. All this relates to sustainability and where the energy is gonna come from. Production of raw polymer. Despite process refinements, which have resulted in a reduction of approximately 25% in the polymerization energy requirements, currently estimated to be in the order of 1.25 kilowatt hours per kilogram of polymer for polyolefins, alternative polymers from biomass sources are estimated to require between 17 and 40 kilowatt hours per kilogram of material produced. Conversion of polymer into finished product. Technology is advancing and there should be reductions in the energy requirements to convert polymer into a finished product. Based on a mobile oil technical paper, the estimated energy consumption for converting polymer into a finished product is in the order of 2.2 kilowatt hours per kilogram of polymer processed. Product life cycle. Based on data supplied by long-term users of the company's products, a reusable, refillable plastic cask has a life expectancy of between 6 and 12 years. This translates to between 48 and 90 fill, dispense, cycle cycles. Taking a nine gallon UK firkin as the basis, and that weighs 4.2 kilograms, the use of thermoplastic per cycle is between 0 0.09 kilograms per cycle and 0 0.05 kilograms per cycle prior to reclamation. Comparable figures for single use container are 1.2 kilograms per cycle. Reclamation of polymer at the end of designated product use. Polyolefins are amongst the easiest of materials to recycle generally, needing only size reduction and no pretreatment prior to reprocessing. Because the designated product comes into contact with food, recycling into the designated product is not permitted. The product is recycled into alternative products using the same polymer, albeit with a 5% degradation of mechanical properties. Conversion of polymer to alternative uses. The energy consumption for the conversion process 
is firstly size reduction to facilitate reprocessing, and secondly, reprocessing into alternative products. And finally, based on customer experience spanning more than 20 years, products produced from recycled plastic casks have a usable life expectancy of seven to 10 years. And this is just a little bit of background to where global energy consumption is. This was based on data of two years ago and that the oil represents 33% of energy consumption. In summary, reusable plastic casts are between 14 and 25 times more environmentally sustainable than one trip equivalents. That's all for the moment. Shall I pass over to Matt? I've got a question, Simon. Okay. Um, so it's a, you are able to recycle the plastic casks, but is there a facility, say for example, in the UK that can recycle the plastic casks? There's a difference between being recyclable and a country being able to recycle it. Yeah, well, we have a, a system set up whereby we can recycle plastic casks. Um, yeah, they are recyclable and it can be done and it is being done. And it's being done across most countries. I mean, I'm talking UK because that's where I'm based. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing, there is nothing, um, when I say special or specific, there are no um, clever uh, modifications you have to do to the standard in inverted commas, thermoplastic recycling, such as size reduction to the point where the results of the size reduction mean that the material can be re reprocessed by either extrusion, injection molding, or dependent upon the grade at blow molding. Great. And what percent? So, again, you've just mentioned that you cannot use recycled casks in new casks because of contact with food. So, do they mainly go into things like locator boards when I'm thinking of industry products? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Without question, that's where the data comes from, and that's where we you know we have we have history going back uh, twenty two years on the recycling, um, and that's that's hard data. It's not wishful thinking. It is data that we can back up from experience with customers. Great, thank you, Simon. I'm just looking to see if there's any other questions. And I can't see any. This is your chance now to ask Simon, or you can ask him at the end. I can't see anything popping up. So, yeah, Simon, if you'd like to hand over. Hi Matt. You hey, You're Ruth. On. Okay, is it working? Yes, it is. Okay, what is not working is the order of the slides. Here, let me just start at the beginning. <clears throat> okay, good uh, good morning to folks in uh, in the U.S. and good afternoon to folks in the U.K. Matt Benucci here uh, from Dolium. Going to walk you through a couple of slides and just who we are and where we trade, but then get into the meat of the presentation, which is on sustainability. Um, you know, hope to share a few uh, new nuggets. Um, my, my guess is that there will be some overlap between the presentation and Simon. We'll also have a few uh, common uh, areas of uh, of overlap, which is good because I think what we're trying Sorry, to do. Here... Matt, I'm just interrupting you a minute, Matt. I can hear an awful lot of overtalk or interference. So somebody's talking. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can uh, walk and talk and chew gum at the same time here. My apologies. So I'm going to try to relocate here to a more quiet area. I'm in a coffee shop uh, taking a couple of days of holiday. And that means that uh, sometimes you have to uh, do work in a coffee shop. How's that? Better? Okay. That's much Se better. Thank you, Matt. Seems better. Okay. Well, besides that, everything's working perfectly. 
Okay, so let me get into uh, just who we are, right? So uh, Dolium has been in the market since 2013, has been trading in the UK since 2014. Uh, we produce in Antwerp, Belgium, and we ship to over 35 countries uh, across the globe. Um, when we consider sustainability as a platform for our company, uh, we kind of break it into four parts into four four steps the first is the life cycle analysis the second is recyclability the third is recycle content and then the fourth is collection and recycling i'm going to talk a little bit about each one of these components as they all fit together in our approach so the first one is the life cycle analysis um, you know, we started doing in 2010, really uh, prototypes. We hit the market in 2013 commercially, but really the keg in 2010 was designed with sustainability in mind. And when we talk about uh, the LCA, uh, as we were doing prototypes, and this goes back to our founder, Albert, uh, Albert Waters, partnered with a, um, a uh, company, uh, a, a laboratory in Belgium, uh, to really design the first oleum prototype. Um, and so when we looked at designing the keg, we looked at all of the aspects against a number of environmental categories um, from cradle to grave, right? This isn't just uh, in the, let's call it, commercial life of the product, uh, but also from the origin of the product to, to the, um, you know, let's say, um, putting the product out of its useful life. And then score dolium against stainless steel kegs. And the results were really quite interesting, uh, maybe interesting to, to some folks dialing in, but really not so, so surprising to us. And that is that the, the sustainability of a one-way keg, and again, I'm talking about dolium specifically here, but there may be some, some common ground here with, uh, with some of the one-ways is that it really depends on three critical variables. The first is shipping distance. The second is rotations. In other words, how many times do you use that keg um, in a year? And then the third is what do you do with that keg at the end of its useful life? And it's binary, you either recycle it or you don't recycle it. And so when we did our analysis, you can see the results on the graph to the right of your screen. And if you just focus on, you know, let's say a 20 liter, when a cask or a dolium keg is recycled were better than stainless steel kegs in 18 out of 20 environmental categories. And that's at one rotation. So if you rotate that keg one time and you don't and you recycle it, and the shipping distance in this case is zero kilometers, which is about as conservative a view as you can as you can use. In fact, you know, a, a, a one-way keg not shipped at all is, is extremely rare. Uh, but again, we're trying to hold the variable constant uh, and make a very conservative assessment of the, of the criteria here. And essentially what it says is that we are better than stainless steel kegs at low rotations and zero kilometers of shipping distance if you're recycling the keg. And you can also see in, in blue is if you don't recycle the dolium keg. And stainless steel is the is the last line at the bottom, and so I think a lot of people misunderstand the sustainability of one-way kegs from the beginning versus stainless steel kegs. Um, and our life cycle analysis would suggest that we, as a one-way, certainly dolium specifically, has nothing to hide in terms of our uh, environmental uh, credentials. And again, the best case scenario is if you recycle the keg. We'll talk about that in a second. But even if the keg is not recycled, uh, there is still a very interesting uh, environmental comparison versus, uh, versus stainless steel. And again, as I said before, this is at a zero kilometers of shipping, which is, um, yeah, it, it's almost never the case. So as you ship further and rotate, uh, then those criteria will actually even improve further for, for dolium versus stainless steel. So that's the first step is we talk about the LCA uh, and the way we design the keg and how it performs versus stainless steel. The second step is recyclability. 
And Ruth, you brought up a point before, which is, okay, recyclability is one aspect and recycled is another aspect. You will talk about recycled here in a second. But from a recyclability standpoint, and all of this information is available on our website, is that the dolium keg is made out of 100% recyclable materials, right? And we're very transparent about sharing our uh, uh, materials list. Um, you know, these are all materials that have uh, value to the correct recyclers uh, and have validated uh, second life usage. Uh, again, all this information is available. We're fully transparent about the materials we use in our keg and fully transparent about uh, the fact that all of them can be recycled with the correct recyclers. And again, we'll, we'll back that up in a couple of slides. So that's the second point, right? Life cycle analysis covers the design of the keg, the fact that the keg is made out of 100% uh, recyclable materials. The third in kind of the, the chain for us is the use of recycled content. Uh, and this will become very important, of course, in the UK, but across the EU. And we started using recycled content uh, in dolium kegs in 2019. Um, today, approximately one third of our kegs are made with recycled materials, but the target, of course, is to reach 100% of our kegs using recycled materials by 2025, which means that we will be surpassing the EU regulations. Now, it's not just a matter of using recycled content, but in the UK, based on the plastic tax that's coming into effect in 2022, it's actually the percentage of recycled content in all of the components. We understand the legislation, which is starting in the UK, but we understand will probably be the model for many of the countries in the EU, is that by April of 2022, 30% of all the components in a one-way keg will have to be made with recycled materials or will be subject to a plastic tax. And this is the way that we're operating uh, our timeline. As I said before, we're already using recycled content in our kegs and we are on a path to be able to deliver by April the 30% requirement in all of the major components. And that's only going to increase as you go through 2023 plan will be to get to 50% by 2025. Maybe we can beat it, uh, but at least to be able to get to that 30% by 2022. And again, I think once we get there, uh, the other uh, the other targets will be uh, within, within our reach. And again, we believe this to be on a trajectory um, that is going to be required in the UK and we believe across a number of different members member states. So that covers recycled content. And the last, uh, certainly not least, is to talk about uh, collection and recycling. And again, every market is a bit different. We can say that we are collecting in the UK. Uh, we still have more uh, collecting and recycling in the UK. Uh, and I'll show you how that, how that works here in a second. Uh, and where you can register to have your kegs collected. Um, and we need to do more. Um, we have a scheme that is just, you know, finding its, its, uh, its momentum in the UK. I would say we are further ahead in our collection initiatives uh, in the Benelux region and some other, some other countries on the continent, but we are collecting and are capable of collecting our keg in the UK market as well. And here's a small graph that talks about uh, the different levels of collection for dolium kegs. Um, stainless steel kegs being on the left, uh, we understand how a stainless steel keg rotation works. It goes through the supply chain and, and comes back. Um, with dolium kegs, we are suggesting uh, three potential areas of collection or three potential levels of collection. One is at the, the actual pub, uh, which we're doing in some markets. It's not what we're doing in the UK today, but we are doing in some countries uh, in the continent. 
level one, which would be at the distributor or the wholesaler, uh, we can collect at level one. And we can also collect at level two, which is at the brewer uh, itself. Now, well, there will be minimum requirements in terms of collection. Uh, our goal is to be able to fill a truck uh, with kegs, uh, not just um, you know collect a couple of pallets uh, at a time, but to be able to fill up a truck so we can also be as efficient as possible. And once those kegs are collected, uh, they'll be taken to our uh, collection point where the kegs will be disassembled and sorted be taken to certified recycler. In some cases, I think perhaps on the slide before it talked about 60% of the dolium keg can be used to create other dolium kegs and 40% can be used for other second life applications. So again, 60% we can use ourselves. 40% uh, will be reused, but just not in the production of another dolium keg. So this is live in the UK. Again, it is, I would say, in the early uh, stages of its ramp up. Uh, we're excited to be able to offer this service to customers in the UK. And as I mentioned before, the, uh, let's call it the reuse of our, uh, of our materials. Uh, again, I had talked about uh, verified second life applications for our keg, and you can see here, again, also available on our website, <clears throat> where we're quite transparent about what we can use ourselves and what is being used for other Second Life applications. Um, again, this is uh, uh, what's happening today, not a, not a plan, not something that is work in progress when it comes to uh, the processing of our kegs and what we can use and what uh, what's being used in Second Life applications. This is what's actually happening today in our in our production. Matt, I have a question come in. Please. And um, the question is, where does the dolium keg stand compared to steel kegs when it comes to transport emissions? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, I would say and we can share a summary of our LCA, Ruth. Uh, our LCA would basically cover, uh, let's say, cradle to grave. And so it would, it would line it up apples to apples, right? In the way that a stainless steel keg is shipped, uh, it would say, okay, this is the score for stainless steel. This is the score for for one way, uh, but it would look holistically at the overall cradle to, to grave, not just the logistics. Um, so the answer is it, it, it's part of the LCA, it's part of the score, uh, it's part of this aggregate comparison between stainless steel and, and one way. Uh, so it's, so it's, it's, in the, it's in the formula. I'm not sure that it can be broken apart as a uh, isolated uh, in that way, but it's part of the overall score, and we rate uh, we rate quite good against it. Right, I have another question: How do you know when to collect the empty kegs? So, what's the trigger? This is all. Uh, these are all great questions. So, if you, when you go to our website, you'll see that there is uh, under sustainability. There's a place to register uh, to be part of the scheme. And so when you register, we'll get in touch and we'll let you know what some of those minimum collections are. Um, we have, I think the, the picture before showed a big bag, which essentially is this, um, you know, massive um, plastic uh, kind of uh, nylon bag where we're asking our kegs to be stacked uh, for transport. So all these details will be happy to send you. Just ask you to go to the website, register yourself, and we'll be back in touch. Right, another question. Please. Does Dolium plan to use beer distributors stroke wholesalers to collect empties from pubs and aggregate ready, uh, so consolidate ready for uplift to recyclers? And if not, how will you recover small quantities from pubs and retailers? Yeah, I think maybe either I did a poor job of explaining it or uh, the question came in before the, uh, the slide was shown. So that's level one. So the answer is yes. Um, there are some markets where we are collecting from the pubs individually. Um, these are mostly in the Dutch and Belgian markets. We don't have a plan today to collect at the pubs um, in the UK. 
But what we do have is a plan to collect what we'll call level one, which is the distributor at the wholesaler or distributor or wholesaler or level two, which is the brewer. Uh, again, here, we will be happy to make a run uh, once we have that truck, uh, let's say filled from a couple of stops, all that information in terms of those, those minimums, the stacking, how we want to receive those kegs back um, will be available to you. If you could just register on our website, we'll be back in time. But that's the plan, Ruth, is to be collecting where those volumes are higher, which would be at level one or level two. Thank you, Matt. No more questions. Thank you. Okay, I guess I'm handing it over. Hang on, if that's the end of your presentation, I've got a question. Yeah, sorry, let me, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate it. Just the, the last slide here was basically, yeah. again, in case people don't have the, the website, right? So doliumkegs.com. You can send an email to info at dolium.eu. Um, you can get in touch with me. I'm sure my contact information will also be available on the uh, uh, on the recap or, or on the summary from, from you guys. Thanks. My question is for you and pretty much all plastic keg and cask manufacturers in that brand owners are starting to look at plant-based bottles now for drinks. How viable would it be to look at plant-based kegs and casks? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, Ruth, I could fake an answer uh, and it would be insincere. Um, I will tell you that we are looking at all alternatives. Um, you know, Simon said something, something earlier today about food grade um, and, and maybe I misunderstood, you know, that there's cert certain components of the keg that will not be fit for uh, recyclability. And, I, and, and that's true, certainly, in terms of reusing the dolium keg to make more dolium bodies. But of course, we'll be using recycled PET, which will be, which will be, which will be food safe. Uh, um, and is food safe today. And as we all know, water bottles and many other applications are being made today with, uh, with recycled PET. So that's, let's say, one topic, just, just to clarify that we will use recycled PET they already do in our rings and other components. In terms of the innovation uh, toward other recycled uh, or other uh, alternatives, whether they be plant-based or otherwise, um, we do have a couple of partnerships where we are working collaboratively with a couple of labs to understand where this is going. Uh, I think we're in an interesting position to be able to follow this trend, but couldn't speak today specifically about plant-based or, or others, other than to say that we will continue to keep an eye on this and use all potential innovations that are available to us to, to meet or exceed the targets that, uh, that we set for ourselves. And maybe Simon or somebody else has uh, something more specific. Okay. Thank you. One more question's come in. Do microplastic particles migrate to the beer? No. Great. Okay, no more questions have come in that I can see. Last chance questions for Matt. And um, no, there we go. So Matt, if you'd like to hand over to Tony of Polykeg. There we go, Tony, your screen's up. We just need to put it in slide view. There we go, you're ready. Okay, can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Some interesting information, I thought, there from the two previous speakers, uh, some very good content. Um, I'm probably going to repeat some of what everybody's already heard. Um, so my name is Tony Hurd, Managing Director of Polykeg UK. Um, the, the following presentation, I've tried to keep it um, fairly short and to the point, uh, as in our 
one way keg sustain, environmentally sustainable. Um, but what you're about to see is, 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 is focused around the UK market because that's basically where my remit is and, and all of the innovation and, and the work that we're doing around sustainability um, it, it, it is relevant to the UK market. Um, I'd also like to just point out that I'm not an expert in plastics or recycling. So a lot of what you're going to see is um, taken from um, reports and comments from people who are uh, far more knowledgeable on this than, than I am. Um, so the question was, are one-way plastics environmentally sustainable? And here's a bold statement. Um, Plastic one-way kegs are the most environmentally friendly way to transport and dispense beer, wine, cider, etc. That is compared to steel, glass, and aluminium containers. Now, that's not my uh, information. This is taken from a very detailed and factual report that was produced a few years ago by a leading global brewery. The report was done independently. And as I understand, this was before I actually came into this market, um, the report was, was, was um, produced as a study for this brewery that were considering to go into one-way kegs. They've since gone into one-way kegs. Um, now, the report summarizes the following, and I've got some further detail around this. That, and what we're looking at is, is some holistic facts here. Um, the report does drill down into very, very minute detail, but if we look just holistically, which I think is what everybody's looking for, in terms of what is called the global, the overall global warming potential, one-way kegs are 30% better than steel, 50% better than glass, and 26% better than aluminium. And that's a measure that they have come up with to look at the overall global warming potential. That's from the, manu the, 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 the initial manufacturing of the keg through to its distribution, the logistics, its use, and finally, its recycling. We drill down a little bit further. What, make, what goes into that is topics like water consumption, energy consumption, and quite a startling one, which is dangerous waste production. If you look at water, overall water consumption, one way plastic kegs use 31% less than steel, 22% um, less than glass, and I just can't see that figure, and 30% less than aluminium. For overall energy consumed, one way plastic kegs use 21% less than steel, 43% less than glass, and 34% less than aluminium. So there's a, there's a picture emerging here. Um, and the stark one, I think, is for the total amount of dangerous waste produced, one-way kegs produce 50% less than steel, 40% less than glass, and 37% less than aluminium. This is one of the graphs that... Um, is contained within the report and basically repeats what I've just said there, gives you a little bit more uh, detail about acidification, eutrophication, um, and resources consumed. And that's the same graph, um, same information in, the, in, the, in a graphic form. And as you can see, pretty much there on every, every title or line there, the plastic one-way drums um, have the smallest. Tony, I've got a question. Please. These figures, do they compare sort of a one trip with a stainless, which will have many uses over many years? Is this comparing a one trip of a stainless and a one trip of a plastic, or is it comparing a one trip of a plastic against the fact that the stainless steel will be used for many times? My understanding, Ruth, is that this compares the life of the product. Right. 
Um, and obviously, steel kegs are used numerous times. But over the, over the, the if you look, if you take into consideration the energy used to produce the keg, the transportation of the keg backwards and forwards, the cleaning of the keg, uh, the final you know recycling or whatever of of, of the steel keg. Then compared to a one-way keg, um, these are the numbers that that have been um, reported by in the report. Thank you. Now I think there are some other very important factors that we've got to figure in here because I think what the report then does go on to say that it, it's providing that the one-way keg. In fact, all of the kegs used, but provided, especially the one-way keg, is disposed of in a in a in a in a, um, in a sensible and um, useful manner. Um, so I think it'd be no good saying one-way kegs are more environmentally sustainable if everyone's thrown into landfill. Clearly, that wouldn't work. So I think what what we what, what the caveat here is that the, the one-way kegs are and and, and um, and I think Matt alluded to this in his presentation, that as one way cake manufacturers, we've got to have a, a sensible and sustainable and easy to use recycling program. And that is difficult to, to get to. Um, and like Dolly, we're in the early stages of, um, of developing that. And I'm gonna show you some more information on that in a, in a moment. But the other thing is that the kegs must be have the ability to be recycled. So in other words, the plastic used within the kegs can be recycled um, and then used either to make more kegs or to use to, to make other products. And that's where we've been working very hard over the last um, couple of years to find recycling partners because we're not a recycling company, so to find recycling partners who can um, not only arrange collection of, of kegs, but also then arrange to have these kegs um, recycled in a responsible manner. And we're getting there. We're not 100% there yet, uh, but we recently launched our, our keg recycling program here in, here in the UK. Um, and we, we are very pleased with the, the response that that's had so far. And here's just a little... ...how that works. Partnered with, um, let me just take that back a second. So we've partnered with Murphy and Son, who I'm sure most people in the UK certainly will be aware of. They are a, um, a, a, a drink, a, a, an industry wholesale and distributor. Um, we've also partnered with a company called Reborn, who are part of a big um, environmental group um, based in um, in the south uh, near St Albans, um, and together. Between the three of us, we have come up with a plan to not to, to collect the kegs. Initially, there's going to be um, an address that kegs can be sent to. And then there's going to be some um, drop-off points around the UK, and that's going to be arranged by Murphy and Son. Eventually, we're then going to hopefully arrange collection of kegs. Um, and we're looking and we're looking to work with more partners on that um, to to get that up and running because it, what we want to be able to do is make the collection of the keg and therefore the recycling of the keg a cost effective but be as easy as possible i've got a comment actually come in associated with that tony and yeah. the comment is i guess these numbers assume high recycling rates which is where the cost comes in to uplift and consolidate one-way kegs into loads for recycling as these costs are loaded onto the users through higher keg prices, that might make one ways even more economic. What's your response to that comment? Um, even more economic or even more uneconomical? Even more uneconomic. So the uh, implication is that the more you recycle them, the more that cost is going to be passed on to the user, which raises the cost of the one trip. Yeah. In other words, do you see that this is going to be cost effective? What you're well, doing? We haven't increased prices based on the, our recycling program. Um, and indeed, one of the partners that we've just partnered with, that I'll come on to in a moment, are offering free collection um, of, of, of kegs. But look, at the end of the day, 
as we become a society that is, you know, being driven quite rightly, so to recycle more product, there is a cost of, to that recycling. Um, and it's a cost that, that we are all going to have to bear and share um, if we want, you know, a, 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 you know, if we want a society that has less throwaway plastic and, and more recycled plastic. I, I said at the beginning of this presentation, I'm not an expert on, on plastics, but what I do know is that I think plastic is a fantastic product. We, we will be completely lost without it. It's versatile, it's cheap to produce, it's easy to produce. You can reuse it over and over again. Um, and I think we shouldn't be afraid of plastic, but what we, should be, what we should be is responsible about plastic and do everything that we can to put you know, processes and facilities in place to ensure that the plastic that we use in our lives is um, handled correctly at the end of its life. Thanks, Tony. So, Reborn, um, so the beauty about our, about, about our recycling program is that these kegs are all recycled here in the UK. Um, they're not shipped abroad anywhere. They're not um, broken down and then shipped in component parts. So 100% of the keg will be um, recycled in, in Reborn's facilities near St Albans. And they are, they, they are used to make um, currently a range of, of clothing and hospitality products back into the industry. And we have an information sheet on if anybody's, you know, is, wants to understand in more detail about how the scheme works and how they can get involved and how they can get kegs recycled, then we, we, we have an information sheet. If you just send us a call us or send us an email, then we'd be happy to, to put that out to you, which explains how you would go about it. Um, literally just recently, or last week, um, a new recycling partner called the WDS Group. WDS Group have been recycling kegs for quite a few years now and are a, a, a big partner of, of Key Keg who um, have, you know, I think did a fantastic job in, 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 in recycling kegs. Um, and we have now partnered with them and they are an official um, recycler. Um, they will actually um, collect kegs for free um, if you're a customer of theirs. And if you're not, then there would be a small charge and, and you would need to contact them to find out um, what that would be. here at Polykeg is, is, is provide the ingredients to enable keg recycling. We've already seen that, that one-way kegs, when compared to other forms of containers, are significantly more environmentally sustainable. Um, the last piece of that jigsaw is to ensure that the kegs are recycled correctly um, and in a more cost-effective and easy way. And that's the part that we are um, we're working hard to to improve upon um, and, and, and it will get better and it will become more ubiquitous and I think it will be just become second nature eventually. Um, so just to summarise what I've been talking about there, plastic one-way kegs are the most environmentally friendly packaging for beer provided they are 100% recycled in a sensible manner. Poly kegs are 100% recyclable, everything in there can be recycled. We've launched a recycling program to help enable kegs to be recycled. Um, and therefore, my conclusion is that one-way kegs are an environmentally sustainable option for breweries. Thank you.
Thanks, Tony. I'm just looking to see if there's any more questions. I've run out of questions. I've used all my questions up now. <laughs> going through again, I mean, what's your thought? I know you're no expert on plastics, but what's your thought on innovation? Because my personal feeling is that the word recycled will become a dirty word down the line. And that, you know, we will be sort of moving towards innovation to non-plastic products like plant-based. That seems to be the way to go at the moment. What's your thoughts on that? You know, I think, I think it's interesting, but I think ultimately, I think most product innovation is market-led. Um, and it's about understanding, you know, the, um, the ramifications for the customer on, on, on anything that, 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 that is developed or innovated. What does that mean to the, piece, to the people that are actually using the product? How does that affect the way they use it? How does it affect the price of it or the cost of it? Um, and I think that I don't know personally about the plant-based plant um, materials. I know the Polykeg is very innovative. Um, we're already, we've got an innovation program that's currently looking at a range of different um, types of, of, of keg. Um, so we're, we're not necessarily, um, you know, resting on, on, on what we've got at the moment. Um, but I think it has to be commercially viable. Um, and if it is, then, it, and it's better for the environment, then I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, why, most manufacturers would, would, would take a look at it. Great, thank you. 